Ghost Simulator has updates every two weeks to the game, and because of this, it's really nice to see the new content on a pretty regular basis to be able to play new stuff. But sometimes the updates aren't always the best, as you can probably see from some of my update reviews. I don't really like some stuff, and really loved some other stuff. And because of that, I'm deciding to share some of my ideas for updates, and here are my 10, I 10 ideas that I have for updates in Ghost. Now the first idea I have, and I really would like to see implemented in Ghost Simulator, isn't really something new content wise, but more of changing something that's already in the game. More specifically, the infinite quest lines that are throughout the worlds in Ghost Simulator, since currently the gem rewards from them are absolutely useless since you can't do anything with the amount of gems you get. Even David, who is in the void, who gives you crate keys and boss fade, is really useless now since there's been added more ways to get both those items so doing his quest isn't really worth your time aim when you have other methods that you can actually duel with getting gems and other useful items while still getting the same amount of crate keys or even more crate keys and boss bait than you would with david and ideas for changing them would be adding some sort of permanent perks to their quest lines for instance like each specific one for every completion of the cycle of their quest line they could give you a like more inventory space or increased buffs like you have with your rebirth so that you have buffs to like your gems or your currency selling or even maybe other buffs like increasing your speed or giving you one additional stream or tons of other content that you can add to infinite quest lines just to make them more worthwhile and add new depth to the game. Now additionally you could they could also just buff their quest line like gem amount so that they are useful for grinding or change it so that all of them give you crate keys and good amounts of crate keys too but overall updating these so that they'd give you good stuff is actually a really strong idea in my opinion to allow the game to be a little bit more fun to play and a little bit more variety in what to do. The next idea I have is a pretty basic one that most people can pretty much agree with but as an update just going over some of the bugs that are in Ghost Simulator like specifically Final Boss being a little bit buggy and the current broken rebirth perk of the Ecto bits just doing some bug patches is always nice for an update and would really help for the overall game feel. It really wouldn't be too complicated to do since all I would think that they need to do is analyze what their current code and figure out some problems. But it, it could be very in-depth and be really nice in that respect, no matter how long it takes. The next idea I have is a little bit more in-depth, requiring some addition of new content into the game. And that would be the addition of a new rebirth perk that allows access to new bonus biome areas for each both main hub and back door of Ghost Simulator that can be unlocked using the items from the current bonus biomes. So they'd act as sort of a overpowered bonus bonus biome of a sort with high health ghosts that drop tons of gems and are just really good for like grinding in those areas. The exact details of the ghosts and how you unlock isn't really specific, but more of the idea is that you'd be able to get new unlock new areas with new ghosts to grind better. Um, but I there it's could it be explored multiple different ways and it'd be really cool to see new content for rebirths. The fourth update idea is a little bit more complicated in depth since it has to do with readjusting a lot of math that goes into Ghost Simulator. More specifically, it has to do with how the backdoor progression works since for people like me who have both the double items and glitchy loot gum, getting through the backdoor happens in about an hour. But for people who have new to the game or just casually playing through and don't have game passes, it can take upwards of 10 to 20 hours to get through the back door for the first time, and even subsequent times after rebirthing and still having loot gum of some sort. And because of that, I feel like back door and basically all loot drops need to be kind of readjusted a little bit so that people who don't have game passes can actually play a little bit better in the game. For my idea for this would be to nerf how multipliers to ghost drops work instead of working as they currently do where it's multiplying both numbers so times two from the game pass would be multiplied by times four from glitchy loot gum to be times eight instead of working as an additive amount so times two from 
your game pass is instead plus 100% mathematically, um, is the same when you're just comparing it to the base. But once you, if you, they're all that plus, so glitchy loot gun would be plus 300% loot. And once you add them all together, it'd be 100% base plus 100% for the game pass and plus 300% for the glitchy loot. Give you a times five. So it'd be an overall less multiplier. And if you compare that to what the people without the game pass is, they'd be only getting the plus 300%, but they'd still be getting four times the loot and compared that to the five times that the game pass people get it'd be a lot closer and then to account for this basically item drop rates would be increased in the back door only so that instead of dropping one item they drop one to two and the ones that drop two to one to two already would be up to one to three or two to four um just to, so that's mathematically the same for the people with game passes and glitchy loot gum but increase for everyone else now this would really be helpful for people coming in casually since they don't have any loot gum so they'll be getting that constant 1.5 times boost through item progression and if they are using loot gum they'd be still be getting a ridiculous amount more since that 1.5 is now up to six times instead of four times what they normally have and the people with the game passes already would still be getting 7.5 times compared to their 8 times so it just isn't too much differently and so overall it would really help uh, bring free to play players and pay to win players all closer together so that it's more equal between them and if you are playing like if you aren't playing with glitchy loot gum and you are still pay to win um, with the game pass you'll be getting actually that same benefit of that increase in I base items without having to worry about that decrease in your overall um, st stacking of the loot items. It's just one of those ideas that I've had that could help like balance out the game a little bit more for everyone. The next update suggestion I have for Ghost Simulator is a really common one across basically all the grinders of Ghost Simulator. Ask any player and they'll basically say that this is one of their top requested features in Ghost Simulator. And despite that, it hasn't been added yet and it'd be really simple and that is the addition of a convert all feature for converting currencies into gems this could also be applied for gum machines too but mainly for currencies to gems since players sometimes are converting upwards of billions of gems worth of currencies and it just starts taking absurd amounts of time for instance some players have auto click converters for over 10 hours straight to convert all of their currencies to gems which really isn't time spent that you should be spending to do that in any game and because of that that's probably the one of the most simple yet biggest updates in the, that would be nice to have in this video now my unique take on that idea would be to add a converter inside the void where it's you go into it you click one button and all your currencies from the world including Ghost World, Main Hub, and Backdoor are all converted to gems at the same time. This really fits the theme of the Void since the theme of the Void is gems. Since you sell for gems, all the ghosts only drop gems, and it would fit very well with it there. And be really nice if you're rebirthing since you don't have to go back to other worlds to convert all your stuff. You can just go into the machine, click that, and then head off and rebirth. But really... It can be done multiple ways, and I just want to see if you guys have any other ideas on that. If, if you do, leave them in the comments. Now the sixth update I have is really similar to the last one, but it's a little bit shifting more from the machines to just the general feature. Whereas when you're going down to rebirth, before rebirthing it automatically having a feature where it automatically converts all your stuff into gems, like I said before with the currencies. Um, but also converts all your items to since they get lost anyways and it makes sense for them to be all convert for someone to convert anyways so having that happen automatically would be nice and just automating and making rebirthing a little bit faster to do. Now the next update idea I have is another commonly requested feature and that is decreasing the time limit for boss fights or the waiting time at least between boss fights in for mega bosses since to do a mega boss in a private server you still have to wait the full minute or minute and 30 even for the G great guardian and so reducing those times down to like 15 seconds or even 30 seconds still keeps the integrity of the fight and reduces some that 
loose time that's just wasted inside Ghost Simulator. It would be really nice to see in the game. The eighth suggestion I have for an update to Ghost Simulator could be the implementation of some board quest lines that give you additional board storage space. With the increase in amount of events, you, people's inventories are really starting to fill up. Even with game passes and alt, your inventory is getting full of all the random event stuff that you want to hold on to since it is limited and looks cool, but you don't quite have the storage space for it all. So adding more storage space, especially for boards, for both free to play and people who have paid for more storage board storage space already can be really helpful for helping people manage their inventories in Ghost Simulator. The next update I would like to see in Ghost Simulator is another thing to do with changing something that's currently in the game, more notably the incinerator in the junkyard. Currently it is absolutely useless since by the time you get to it the currencies you get from it are worthless and from there it just gets worse. Uh, but but if you ch if the numbers of it are changed in a way that instead of giving the currency they rather give gems for incinerating item it may actually make it usable and if it's buffed significantly it could actually make a decent option for getting rid of items rather than just the current which everyone converts it to gum currently incinerators useless other than quests and really since the, it was added it's been that way so making giving it a buff would really help the overall like feel of it i guess i don't know if it really needs it since we do have the use for items in gum but having a buff to center pretty would help the game a little bit by giving a little bit more usefulness to something that's in the game and the final update I would like to see in Ghost Simulator is a n more rebalancing of the quest lines, mainly focusing on Ghost World since Main Hub's already had a, quite a bit of balancing and Backdoor is new enough that the quests are sort of fine. But in Ghost World, the quests are kind of chaotic and the progression through it isn't self-explanatory enough for most people to understand. So rehauling some of that layout, maybe by adding a door to the the castle area of it that is locked behind Luna's key and a little bit more information regarding what each quest gives so people know exactly what to do once they get in there since most players either start doing it normally like following Shelly and the closest ones but there's enough NPCs us elsewise that you can easily get lost once you go to Ghost Simulator for the first time especially since you unlock it at a 10 level of 10 while you're still working on Finsley and you you unlock at that same time Blaze, Luna, who, Human, Infinite Questline, and just a ton of content all at once once you hit the 10 of level 10, where it should, in my opinion, be more spread out so that players understand how it's going. When the game was first created, as each of these updates came out, and at the time, it was kind of nice since new players, they'd get, if you were up to date on that game, every update you'd be able, oh, new content in the Ghost World that you can go do. But now that it's all agglomerated together, there's no real way to know what to do. And with that, that is my last update that I would like to see in Ghost Simulator. If you have any one of these that you really like or really disagree with, you can leave your comments on them in the description. Also, if you have any other ideas that go similar ideas, you can share them with me or there's a suggestion channel in the main Voxbyte Discord for those sort of suggestions game. Um, all of these suggestions have already suggested or are common suggestions throughout the community and really aren't like really nice for specific that people like but not really credited creditable to one player and the ones that are pretty unique are usually my own but if i am missing any of these suggestions credit for um i i am sorry about that and with that i'll see you guys in my next video